Another salmon fly here. This is not a traditional salmon type fly, but it is kind of traditional in the sense that of modern flies. This is called the popsicle. Uh, it is also sometimes referred to as a Alaska boo popsicle. So if you do a search on the popsicle fly and or Alaska boo popsicle, you'll find this, which is, um, at least I was introduced to this fly. This is the more uh, classic way or traditional way that it's tied with an orange, fluorescent pink and purple marabou, but I've seen it in other colors as well. So you may find it out there in other colors that you like. But it is what is called a flesh fly, um, and that is salmon up in Alaska in the northeast or northwest. I mean, as um, they will actually attack um, chunks of flesh of other salmon that are rotting and tumbling down the stream and everything. They will um, attack those. So this is more or less to represent. I'm not certain if rotting salmon look fluorescent pink and purple, but. I have used flesh flies in Alaska and they're very effective. Um, anyway, this is the popsicle. It is a interesting fly. It's a very simple fly to tie, but it's interesting because the um, marabou on here is actually tied in and palmered or wrapped around the hook shank. It's not tied in in your traditional way of like, a, say, a woolly bugger tail or something like that. So it's a little bit different. It's a fun fly. It's quick tie, uh, very colorful. And who knows, uh, might even catch some bass on this. I don't know. Well, might maybe give it a shot this year. But that's the popsicle. We'll go ahead and get started. We're going to start tying the popsicle by placing our hook in the vise. This is a mustad. SL73 UBLN. The older uh, numbers on these were a 36890. It's just a single salmon hook, is what they call them. This is a size 2. You can, um, I'd go down to maybe a size 6, but up to about 2.0 on this. Um, anyway, after I debarb the hook, I'm going to attach my thread. I'm using a Danville 60 fluorescent fire orange thread on this. You could use a pink if you want or even a red. Um, it's up to you, but generally um, the head of the fly is going to be a nice bright color. As you'll see with all the marabou colors in here, it's all very bright. So I just chose the fluorescent fire orange just to give it a nice bright nose. I'm going to lay down a layer of thread here because I'm going to add some glue to this when we wrap our body on. The body is made of a mylar tinsel and just to give it a little bit more strength I'm going to add a little bit of head cement to the threads when we wrap that body on. Not super concerned about it being you know an exact smooth layer of thread. I just want to get some up and down the hook shank to reinforce the mylar a little bit. Bring my thread back up to just past the return loop of the eye. I'm going to tie in the body material. I'm using a Danville uh, silver and gold flat mylar in a size 12. You could go with a smaller size if you want. You can go with a bigger size also if you want to um, not put so many wraps in, but bigger sizes sometimes can be difficult to wrap on the body and, and keep it nice and smooth. I'm going to trim the end of this at a nice angle, as you can see, 45 or maybe a little bit more. I'm going to place this on top of the hook shank with the gold side up, right inside, or I should say right behind the, the eye of the hook in the head space here. And I'm going to wrap just past the return loop a little bit, wrap that down, and then back up. And that's just going to secure it real nice. All this is going to be covered up with marabou in a minute. I'll take the mylar and just give it a gentle tug back and fold it back the opposite direction. And then I'm going to take some fly tight um, or whatever head cement you have. And I'm just going to put a little thin bead right in there. You'll see as I wrap this, the um, mylar will actually push that around the hook shank. 
I'll start to wrap this in. It'll flip over to the silver side. And I'm just going to wrap this in. I want touching turns or a little bit of a gap. Um, and the, the reason for a slight gap is that some of that glue will squeeze up and in the second layer uh, will help to hold it down. The other thing is, is that, that second layer will cover up any of those gaps that I have in there. But if they're touching turns, that's fine too. And then when I come back up, I want to put in just touching turns or even a slight overlap. If you get some glue squeezing out on the top there, no big deal. Remember, most of this body is all going to be covered up. Um, it gets seen in flashes, so it doesn't have to really be uh, exact, perfect, um, smooth, edge-to-edge -edge wraps and all that kind of stuff. I'm going to tie that in right in the head space here on the hook shank. Number of wraps to secure that real well. And then I'll cut the excess off. Just smearing whatever glue squeezed out there over on top of it just to help secure it. Um, but that will give that mylar a little bit more security uh, when it comes to fishing the fly. And I'm going to bring my thread down to about a third of the way down the hook shank. We're going to tie in our main body material, which is all marabou. We're going to polymer these hackles in. And uh, we're really not going to be taking up a whole lot of the hook shank uh, on this. So you want to take care not to go, you know, down halfway down the hook shank or further. Keep it about a third of the way down. The first uh, marabou that I'm going to tie in is my orange. This is a fluorescent orange. I'm using a blood quill. You could use a, uh, like a select marabou if you want. Blood quill works well enough. What I'm going to do is I'm going to stroke the fibers away from the tip. I even like to wet down the tip just a little bit that makes it a little more, more manageable. And I, where those are separated I'm going to tie right onto the hook shank here. And then I will fold back that tip. Some people will cut that out and that's fine if you want to do it that way. I just fold it back and wrap it down to secure it and then I'm going to wrap about a third of the way up the hook shank. And this is going to be where the, the fluorescent orange is at and then the pink and then the purple. I do like to use hackle pliers for this because one hand is going to be very busy managing the hackle fibers and stroking them back out of the way so we don't uh, end up wrapping a lot of them on the hook shank and just have a, a big mop. Then I'm just going to start wrapping that around the hook shank. I want each wrap right in front of the other one. You'll notice as you're wrapping these around that the fibers trailing here, oops, that happens sometimes. I'm just going to leave these in because those are all secured in and I'm just going to uh, reestablish a tip to the hackle right here. Remember this is the marabou, is, it's got a lot of life to it so uh, we tie this in and it's very forgiving in that regard. And again I'll fold that back Sometimes the tips of those are just a little bit delicate and they end up getting broken when you're wrapping them in, but like I said, that's fine. So we'll start that over again. I'm going to stroke these fibers out of the way. I'm wetting my fingers here with a little saliva. You can have a dish nearby if you want. Um, I wouldn't wet them down too much you mostly want to just be able to stroke those fibers out of the way so that they trail down the hook and they don't get wrapped in underneath the uh, the rachis of the feather as you are wrapping that around. You probably notice that a lot of those fibers going back this way are starting to get kind of wrapped around each other. That's fine. I leave those I can pick those out in a minute, but I'll just leave them because they're staying out of my way. Once I start getting up to where the real thick part of 
the stem of that feather is, I'm just going to stop wrapping and I will bind that in along the hook shank four or five wraps and then cut the excess off. As I said, you can see the orange right there has kind of gotten all matted, clumped up behind you know, at the bend of the hook in this area here. That's fine. I'm just going to actually leave that for the moment the way it is because, like I said, it is under control and it's out of my way. We certainly can pick all of that out as we get, f get the fly done. So that's the fluorescent orange. The next is going to be our fluorescent pink. Our fluorescent pink is going to get tied in the same way as the orange. I'm again using a blood quill here. You'll notice that these are, uh, some might say, kind of sparse. I mean, they're not really that full, and that's fine. You don't have to have a lot. That's the great thing about the marabou in the water. It really a little bit bulks up and really looks like a, a full body. So a lot of times these are shorter feathers, but um, if you get a blood quill that's, that's really, really long, you'll even just cut out the upper half of it because that's really all you need. Same procedure, I'm going to stroke back the fibers from the tip of the, the feather like this, wet those down a little bit just to help control it a little. I'm going to tie that in right here in front of the orange, fold those back, secure those, and then I'm going to advance my thread up about another third. Right here I'm actually right about the, ba the base of the loop back on the, the eye of the hook. Same procedure, grab your hackle pliers, stroke these fibers back. It may look like it's kind of unruly and a mess as you are um, wrapping this in and proceeding with the fly, but trust me when we pick all this out and finish up the fly, it will look just fine. And again, I'm wrapping this in, stroking all of this back so that I don't wrap any of those fibers underneath. And I'm going to, you know, for this one, I have pretty much the whole stem of the feathers nice and flexible, so I'm going to wrap all that in Bring my thread up over to secure it. A few wraps to make certain that's all nice and secured. And then I'll just trim away this little excess bit here. Certainly kind of looks like a mess. I'm going to wrap these down. And then we're going to wrap in our flash. Again, I'm leaving this all kind of matted and looped together just because then it's out of my way. Flash on this, I'm going to be using a polar flash. A lot of people will use a flashaboo. Even a flash accent, I think, is really good. Flashaboo, one issue with it is that really, if you look at it in the water, the only place you get really any flash off of it is the very um, ends that are um, wiggling in the water. They'll reflect, refract the light right off the ends. So if you have them in the body there, often you don't get any flashes or anything along it in the body. It's just at the very ends. I like this polar flash because of the way it's set up. It actually will flash all along um, the fibers that are tied in. I'm going to collect about a half a dozen fibers. And I'm cutting these off full length. And I'm not going to concern myself right now about, you know, the exact length because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these up underneath the thread to my side. I'm going to get a couple wraps in to secure it and then I'm going to trim this, this over here. What I want to do is trim these so that they're different lengths. Um, if you just trim them right 
straight across. Um, it gives to me it gives it too much of an abrupt edge to it. I want something that looks a little more natural and tapered. A few more wraps working my way now back down to the base of the fluorescent pink, and then I can fold this over to the other side and wrap it down, and then I can trim this the same on this side. Again, wanting to keep those of different lengths. This is also, a, the, the polar flash is a, a pink, I think it's called a shrimp pink um, polar flash color. Uh, I, a pink or a pearl I think would work fine. The pearl will tend to reflect the colors around it, so that would work just as well. Now the last marabou that we're going to tie in here is going to be some purple. Um, again, this also is a blood quill. Um, and. I find that the purple, because it's so dark, um, needs to be just a little bit thinner than the rest because it's just going to provide a little bit of contrast to the, uh, the orange and the fluorescent pink. Same procedure, separate the fibers at the tip, Gets, that will basically get us a tie-in point, tie that in. Fold it back, make certain it's secure, and bring my thread forward. This, this uh, time it's going to be pretty much right at the base of where the head of the fly is going to be. Grab my hackle pliers, same procedure. Stroke those fibers back and start palmering that around. If you've never palmered marabou before, it can take a little bit of getting used to, but just take your time with it. Don't worry about it. I mean, if you snap some feathers or if they kind of end up not looking all that great, it's not the end of the world. They'll still fish well and you can still catch fish with them. Um, just tie some more to get used to the material and the procedure. Once I get down to the end of that feather, if you're lucky and the stem or rachis of the feather, this part here, is nice and thin, you can get most of that actually wrapped in. But what will often happen is the feather that you tie, that you uh, are using, gets real thick. This is a good example. It's not an example of a feather I'd use for this fly, but it's a good example of the stem. If you take a look at this, I'll try and spread this out a little bit, what you'll notice is that the stem right up here is nice and thin. That's going to wrap really nice and easy along the hook shank. But when you start to get down into this area here, it gets much thicker. It's not going to wrap so easy. By the time you get down here, it's not going to wrap at all. It's basically going to be cracking and breaking as it goes around the hook shank. So this is considered more the usable portion of the feather, at least for this application. I would wrap this in until I got to right about here where it started to get real thick, and then I'd tie it off. And depending on what I'm wanting to do, if I need a real full collar, then I would take another feather and add to that in the front as opposed to trying to wrap this in right here. This is all going to break up. Little tip there. Okay, so our purple is in and all I'm going to do is make the head of the fly here. This is just going up to the base of the eye of the hook and back. I want to cover up all that purple um, which is kind of dark so it's going to take a number of thread wraps on top of it. And I'm also wanting to make just a bright nose to this fly. Again, this is an attractor pattern. I'm not trying to look like a subtle, you know, a worm or something swimming in the water. I want this bright neon, come eat me uh, attraction to it. So once I get the head made, I'm not going to mess with the whip finish tool. I'm just going to go ahead and do a five or six turn whip finish by hand. and cut my thread. 
I'm going to take some fly tight and put on there. That will soak down into those threads, holding the thread and that marabou in. And you could put a little fly tight um, at each step when the marabou, when you tied that in, if you want to secure it a little bit more, you could put some in there to add a little bit of strength. Now I'm going to take my bodkin and I'm going to pick out the marabou as I had mentioned before, that was all kind of wrapped in and around the hook shank. This also gets all of it just kind of going back in the same direction. You know, this is a flesh fly. It's a it's a fly that, you know, you take this out of the water, uh, it'll be heavy if the first few casts. Um, but, I mean, it has just a ton of life in the water, um, lots of action to it. Uh, it's a great looking fly in the water. Very colorful. So there's your popsicle. As you can see, um, even just me talking, my breath here on it just really gets all those fibers really moving. You can imagine in the water, little microcurrents and everything just getting this, breathing life into this fly. But the popsicle is what's called a flesh fly, used for um, salmon and steelhead. I think probably more salmon than, uh, than steelhead. Uh, I've used it for salmon before. I have not caught any salmon on it, but uh, it just has a lot of action in the water. And it's a fun fly to tie. It's quick to tie, um, and being able to palmer the marabou around, um, that's a good skill to have in fly tying. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed this video and not only learned a new pattern, but maybe learned some new techniques and a few new skills. If you like this video, please hit that thumbs up button below. You can support Dressed Irons by hitting the subscribe button and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when new videos are published. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the comment section and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, you're doing it wrong. <laughs>